would straighten out by Wednesday, but the server's given me an error. But we saw what the page looked like when we went over here. We went to CISSQL dot RNCCC edu slash CISS268 slash index dot PHP. Now we're asking for this page through a web server. CISS SQL is a web server. Localhost, which I typed in before, which gave me an error, is a name for my local development web server. Now, you might say, what if I don't have a web server? Well, first of all, if you run a Mac, there's already web servers installed for that. And there's probably even PHP installed for it, again, depending on the version and so on. Um, there is a, a product available for free, um, and I posted a link to it, installing a web development environment, that if you follow this link, you can get documentation about installing um, this environment, XAMPP. Um, for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, even Solaris. This is open source. Uh, is based on the Apache web server. Apache is the world's most uh, common web server software. Uh, Apache is an open source software, which means that it's developed by people, and it and the source code behind it is made freely available to, to anyone that wants it. So. This is, this is, you know, a, a great little development environment that you can set up. If anyone needs a hand setting this up on their particular environment, I can give them a hand in lab. But it is good to try to do it on your own and try to install that. All right? So, the, the point of this being, though, that you have to run these pages through a web server for them to work. Because again, remember, they're just instructions for a web page. So let's go and let's open one of my web pages, the index one. And I'm going to open it up in Notepad. And we'll look at the main parts of how it works. Now, the main instructions that I want to focus on are the instructions from like line 1 to line 13. Let's see, can I get them all? Yeah, I can get them all on the screen at the same time. This is the user agent sniffing, or the browser sniffing um, code. Notice, it, notice a couple things about this. This is, first of all, written in PHP. How do we know that? Because the code is surrounded by these PHP declaratives. So PHP, PHP. So everything between here and here is not plain old HTML. Therefore, the web server will not send this to the browser. The web server will instead process it and do whatever the instructions say. All right? One thing about this is I went to a website, detectmobilebrowsers.com, all right, and borrowed some of their code. This is a great site that was set up because there are new mobile browsers and new stuff coming out all the time. An individual developer can't possibly keep up with all that stuff. So, these folks, what they've done is they've created a 
scripts in a variety of different languages that you can download for free. It's open source. And the idea is, is this was last updated uh, July 3rd. All right, so it's pretty current. And you can click on any of these and you can download a snippet of code in, in whatever language uh, you want. All right. I picked the PHP. You can do JavaScript redirection, by the way, but again, um, typically I, I would I would think it would be better to do that on the server side because you you know JavaScript may not be enabled on a particular browser or whatever. So I'm going to pick the PHP one, and what it did is it gave me a file. I'm just going to open that file. Here's what that file looks like. It's really just one gigantic, or actually it's two statements. This statement here, and then one gigantic if statement. That looks through all the possibilities for the browser. Aren't you glad you don't have to write this one? What it's doing is it's looking at the user agent that is being sent as part of the request. And it's seeing if it's any of these. So notice, it's looking to see, we'll just pick out some. Looking to see if you're running Android. Looking to see if you're running a Blackberry. Looking to see if you're Elaine. I have no idea what that means, why Elaine gets special treatment. But apparently she does. Am I running IE Mobile? Am I running a PSP? And so on down the line. If I'm running any of these browsers, I'm running a mobile device. And I then am going to be redirected. All right? And that's what this little snippet of code down here says. If that's the case, redirect it. So if I go from here and I type in detectmobilebrowsers.com, this practice is what it preaches and it says it has detected a mobile browser. All right, so I downloaded that script. No one should be expected to, like, memorize that or know that, right? Someone else is doing it and providing it for free. That's a great thing about open source platforms is that there's so much good stuff out there uh, available for free. So I'm admitting that I've adapted that script from there, a comment, all right? Now, we're going to skip this line for... for a few minutes. We probably won't get to this until Wednesday. But essentially, we have in line four, we have our first real statement. Lines two and three are comments. Just as in JavaScript, the two slashes indicate a comment. All right. Line four is our first real line of code. And what it does is it looks at this property of the request, okay? Associated with the request, if you remember, I said there's all sorts of information. There's the URL that you've asked for. There's the form fields that you've entered in. There's a whole bunch of stuff. One of the pieces of information associated with the request is called the user agent. Effectively, what browser you're using. And based on that, we're going to determine if you're using a mobile browser or if you're using a desktop browser. All right? So what this line of code does is it accesses the user agent that's part of the request that came to the server. Remember, this code is running on the server. All right? We have not yet sent a page back to the client. All right? So this code is running on the server. 
We're going to pluck out that user agent from the request, and we're going to store that in a variable called user agent. So anywhere later on in our script, when we do something with user agent, all right, it's whatever we pull from there. We then have this giant if statement that identifies all the different user uh, agents that are associated with, with mobile devices. Does it do all of them? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't do all of them. What if it doesn't get one? What if there's a new mobile device that just came out today that has a new browser and all that? Well, then the mobile detection will fail. All right? All the more reason to continue to use responsive and adaptive techniques when you develop these pages. Because this is not foolproof. This has hard-coded stuff in there. It could become obsolete at some point. There could be new things added. In addition, sometimes user agents can spoof, all right, and identify themselves falsely, all right. So this by no means is some sort of foolproof uh, measure, all right. This is taking our best shot at it, all right. And therefore, that's why I said before, don't toss those responsive techniques out the window. We're still going to try to do this page using the mobile first responsive techniques. All right? But we're going to take it a step further and make another version of it that is optimized sort of for mobile. All right. The way an if statement works in PHP is you have the word if, you then have a condition which I don't expect you to know what that condition means in its entirety. We're, we're just taking this one on faith for now. If that is true, we're ignoring line 8 from now, we're doing this. We're writing to the client a different header. This is effectively the line that redirects them to mobile.php. All right? So, if they're on a mobile device, we're sending them to mobile.php. Now, notice, notice one thing about this. This code is at the very, very, very top of the page. You can't rewrite the header if you've started to send something to the browser. What I mean by that is, if I were to put this code up here, If I were to put this code up here, the server would generate an error. Why? Because we've already started sending stuff to the browser. Remember, anything that is not in the PHP uh, directive gets automatically sent to the browser just as is. So if we switched around this code and put these two lines of code here, we're going to get an error on the server. All right. So therefore, this redirection needs to be the very first thing we do. And we then redirect to the mobile version. And we set a, a variable of full to true. We're going to use that later on. All right. If it makes it to line 13 and 14 and 15, what can we say about the kind of browser that the user is using? If it makes it to line 15. Are they on a mobile device or are they on a, a desktop? desktop? They're on a desktop, right? Because if they were on a mobile device, then it got sent to this page. All right? This is a code that looks at the browser, the browser being, you know, uh, the, the more formal term for browser is user agent. This code looks at it, and if they are on a mobile browser, it sends them to the mobile version of the page. So now, if they make it to this line of code, we know that they're on a desktop or laptop. They're on, they're on a computer as opposed to a mobile device. At the very least, their user agent has identified itself as being uh, a computer, or probably more accurately, has not identified itself as being one of the recognized mobile devices. 
All right? So if I made it to line 15, I know that I'm on the full version of the site. And what do I do? Well, I apply the same basic um, mobile first principles that I did in the previous labs. That is, I have two style sheets, my base style sheet that gets applied to everyone, and my mobile style sheet which gets applied if we're on a desktop. So I use a media query. This is, again, implementing the techniques of the mobile first attitude. I define my base style sheet, and then I add on and say, okay, in addition to the base style sheet, go in, add this. Now, if you think about it, if somehow this doesn't work, and we have not successfully identified that, that, that we're on a mobile device, then hopefully our responsive, adapted, mobile-first design will take care of it. And they'll get the full version of the page styled for a mobile device. Because that media query will not apply for a mobile device that is misidentified. Okay? I then have the rest of the HTML. One of the things in the HTML I do is I output the user agent, just so that we can take a look at the user agent. So in this case, if I go to here, It's telling me my browser is Mozilla 4.0 compatible MS IE 8.0 Windows NT 6.1 blah 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 blah. So I know the platform that I'm on. When I viewed it from here, the mobile device, I got the appropriate message saying that I'm on Mozilla 5.0 running Android 2.3.7, and so on. So I simply displayed the user agent just to show you kind of what that looks like, and kind of this accurately reflects the environment in this case and in that case. Okay? Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Now, notice what I have. Let's continue to look at, at, this, at this page. I have two more little chunks of PHP code. These are include files. All right? Include files allow us to reuse sections of any kind of code we want to. HTML, PHP, JavaScript, CSS, whatever. In this particular case, these two include files contain HTML. So let's take a look at, at what this does. When the, when the server sees an include file, it's like the server goes and opens up that include file and pastes the contents of it right there. All right? So in this case, I have two include files. I have one that says common content, uh, .inc, and one that says full only, .inc. If I look at those files, let's open the common content one first. All right. Notice what it consists of. It consists of a div, a paragraph, and we'll go over this more later, but if I'm on the full version, it's displaying the picture of that flower. So effectively, this code gets copied and pasted 
right here. Likewise, the fool only will copy and paste that include file right there. And all that is is a div that says content only on full. Now, what do you suppose the advantage of taking code and putting it in an include file is? Why do I bother doing that? I, if all it does is copy and paste it in there, why didn't I just put that code right in the index.php? Want, want to keep it clean? All right, that makes my index.php code look very clean. Reusability. And reusability, right? Later on, when I write the mobile-only version uh, of this, when I write the version of this page for the mobile, I'm going to use some of those include files. Because I want some of the content to be the same on my mobile version as opposed to my desktop version. All right? I want some of the content to be the same. So rather than duplicating that content in two places, which in, in anything you do in software development is a bad idea, duplicating the same thing and putting it in a couple of places, you just know that's wrong right from the word go, I'm going to go and put it somewhere in its own file, and I simply copy that in or bring it in in both places I need it. Okay? Let's look at the HTML for this. Remember, I'm now viewing the source that got delivered to the client. And we notice that what gets delivered to the client is just plain old HTML. Right? The server does its thing and delivers to the client plain old that dot html code. So you don't see any of the PHP code in there. Why? Well, because that code got processed on the server and all that PHP code got translated into HTML. Alright. Now, I'm going to bring the mobile version of this up just to take a look at it. And the mobile version of this is a little simpler. It doesn't have the image, all right? But it still has the same CSS file, right? Notice the colors and fonts are the same. And it still has some content that's common to both pages. Of course, it doesn't have the picture of the flower in there, all right? And, and we'll come to that in a minute. Let's take an overview of the mobile. I want to tell this whole story, and then we'll go back and we'll work on parts of it. Hopefully on Wednesday we'll have a working web server in here so we can play around with the code and make some adjustments and see the impact and, and back and forth. Let's look at the mobile version, the PHP code for this. All right. I set full equal to false. All right. I have my doc type. I'm outputting the user agent, just like I did before. And I have the same include file here as I have in the full version, commoncontent.inc. That way I keep it consistent. I don't have the same content on two different pages. I have that content in a single include file. And if I change that single include file, I can, uh, the changes will automatically be reflected in both places. The other thing I do is I put in a link here that says link to full site. I think that's something that's very important to do too because typically a mobile site will have scaled down functionality. It will only allow you to do certain things. But maybe I really want to do something that the mobile site isn't allowing me to do and I want to do it on a mobile device. And I know it's going to look ugly because I know that that isn't the version optimized for mobile, but I need to go and do it anyhow. Most mobile versions of pages have a link to click on to say, go to the full version of the site. All right? And the full version of the site, what that will do is that will 
uh, I'll call back that same index page, but this time, rather than being directed, I'll put something on the query string that says, ignore the redirection, and even though I'm on a mobile device, don't redirect. I realize this is a lot of stuff for one day. Let's go and, and sort of go back and review the high points, and then we'll go in and, and next time again we'll look at some of these things more in detail, we'll play around with the code, and so on. My suggestion for you is if you want to start the next assignment and you're not familiar with PHP, you could simply, for now, make two HTML pages, a mobile version and a, uh, a desktop version, and at some point we'll be able to convert them into PHP files. It's really pretty straightforward to do that. Um, the other thing to do is look at installing that XAMPP on your machine or, or getting, getting your web server uh, started on your local machine, on your laptop or whatever. All right? But to review, all right, I'm going to focus on this index.php file. This is the main file that we have that the user navigates to. This would be like analogous to the home page for this site. And the first several instructions, first lines of code, from here to here, Look at the user agent, grab the user agent from the request, that's what this line does. Write an if statement, or, or look at the if statement to evaluate if that user agent represents a mobile browser or not. And if it does represent a mobile browser, then redirect it to the mobile page. So. If we forget about line 8 for now, the index page grabs a user agent, evaluates the user agent to see if it's a mobile device or not. If it is a mobile device, it redirects a person to mobile.php. So they call up this page then. If it's not a mobile device, if it's a desktop device, then the rest of the page consists of the version for the full site. And we've used our responsive, mobile-first techniques with that, just on the odd chance that the browser is misidentified, the user agent is misidentified. All right. So, or someone consciously chooses to have the full site even though they're, they're working on a mobile browser. All right. That's probably the most important thing to get from today. If you don't get anything else, that's okay. We'll go over a lot of this uh, again. But the, the big point, the main idea is this first handful of lines of code that look at the mobile browser, decide if it's mobile. If it's mobile, send them to a different page. All right? That is the browser sniffing or user agent sniffing. The rest of this code is my attempt to sort of mitigate the problems that you run into by having two versions of the page, right? The problems that you have by having two versions of the page is you don't want it to be twice the work, all right? So I don't want totally different style sheets. So I'm going to use the same style sheets on both pages. Or at least I'm going to use some of the same style sheets on both pages. I'm also going to, wherever possible, maybe put code in an include file, and that way I can share it between the mobile and the desktop version of the page. All right? We'll review that stuff more. Really, the most important stuff, again, is to understand the rationale between, uh, behind creating a mobile-only site and the specific technique of looking at the browser and redirecting them. The other thing that I mentioned before that I think is good to reiterate is you have to do this redirection right off the bat. You can't have sent anything to the browser, otherwise you can't redirect them uh, via, uh, 
the, uh, this line. Any questions about this?